In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone. As we gather this morning, let us place ourselves in God's loving presence, call to mind our sins as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you sit at the right hand of the Father and intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, perseverance in obeying your will, that in our days, that in our days the people dedicated to your service may grow in both merit and number. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Hor, the children of Israel set out on the Red Sea Road to bypass the land of Edom. But with their patience worn out by the journey, the people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in this desert where there is no food or water? We are disgusted with this wretched food. In punishment, the Lord set among the people seraph serpents, which bit the people so that many of them died. Then the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned in complaining against the Lord and you. Pray the Lord to take the serpents away from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a seraph and mount it on a pole, and whoever looks at it after being bitten will live. Moses accordingly made a bronze serpent and mounted it on a pole. And whenever anyone who had been bitten by a serpent looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. The word of the Lord. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. Hide not your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me in the day when I call. Answer me speedily. O oh Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. The nations shall revere your name, O oh Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. When the Lord has rebuilt Zion and appeared in his glory, when he has regarded the prayer of the destitute and has not despised their prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Let this be written for the generation to come, and let his future creatures praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his holy height, from heaven he beheld the earth, to hear the groaning of the prisoners, to release those doomed to die. O oh Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The seed is the word of, the, of God. Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, 
I am going away, and you will look for me, but you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, He is not going to kill himself, is he? Because he said, Where I am going, you cannot come. He said to them, You belong to what is below. I belong to what is above. You belong to this world, but I, but I do not belong to this world. This is why I have told you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, What I told you from the beginning. I have much to say about you in condemnation, but the one who sent me is true. And what I heard from him I tell the world. They did not realize that he was speaking to them of the Father. So Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am, and that I do nothing on my own. But I say only what the Father taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, because I always do what is pleasing to him. Because he spoke this way, many came to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, we are presented with two symbols. In our first reading, we hear about the serpent. And the serpent is sent among the Israelites because they're mistrusting God. And God is like, okay, I'm going to teach you a lesson here. And the serpent bites members of, bites the people. But then a serpent, gold, a serpent on a pole is put, then if you look at this, you will be cured. And the other symbol in the gospel is of the cross. When you lift me up, you will know that I am. When Jesus is lifted up the, on the cross, when they realize that they have killed Jesus, then you will realize that he is the Son of God. And both of those symbols we recognize today. We, we, we elevate the, both of those symbols. So where is the serpent seen? What symbol? It's a medical symbol of healing. And we also see the cross. That the cross as it hangs, as Jesus hangs upon the cross for us, is that symbol not of death, not only of death, but also of resurrection and of new life. For we trust and believe that life comes from Jesus' death. And Jesus is being lifted up for our sins. Jesus challenges the, the Jews and the Pharisees and all of them to truly recognize Jesus as the Son of God. This Lenten journey is that time for us to recognize our need for God's healing. We are grateful for being able to gather more together because many are more receiving the vaccine to be restored to community and family and friends. I know many people have just wanted a hug, just merely a hug, a connection with others. So we see the medical field today as one of healing and one in which we desire to be restored. And we also look to the cross as one of healing and restoring our souls to the Lord. So let us use this Lenten season as a time 
to recognize the healing power of God. And trusting that we belong to all our loving Father, that we all belong to our all-loving Father, let us bring our prayers before him. For all who serve in the church, may the grace of God strengthen, further strengthen them in their mission. Let us pray to the Lord. For our, for our leaders and all who hold power in this world, may God grant them the ability for just and prudent decision-making, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, the injured, and dying, and for those who care for them, may Christ, the divine physician, bring healing and comfort, let us pray to the Lord. For our, fam for our faith community here at St. Norbert, May the Lord sow seeds that bear much fruit in building up the kingdom of God on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. For the souls of the faithfully parted, for those who have died, for those who've been killed by violence, especially yesterday again in Colorado, that God may bring healing and peace to their families. Let us pray to the Lord and for the repose of the soul of Christopher Kube and Dr. John Joseph Munoz, that God may bring them into his eternal kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. And for those special needs and intentions in which we hold in the silence of our heart. And for these, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear and answer the prayers we offer to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it would become for us the bread of life. Lord, let them make me of this water and wine, let them come to share in the divinity of Christ, not let themselves to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for us. And our God, we ask you to receive us with this for the sacrifice we offer you with humbled and contrite hearts. And Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be pleasing and acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, that being moved to compassion, you may both pardon our offenses and direct our wavering hearts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the, the infinite power of your majesty, since by the one the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the, on the world is now revealed, and the authority of Christ crucified. 
And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exultation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy and Tan, his brother bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other a sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And prior to my reception of communion this day, I pray a spiritual communion prayer with those on our live stream unable to receive communion this day. By Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that ever seeking what is divine, we may always be worthy to approach these heavenly gifts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Let us now go forth in peace. Thanks be to God. And St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, all other evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls.